What does she mean? I don't understand her. I don't know what she wants. Why does she do that? Why can't he be like my father? You know, in the marriage, there are things you need to do for each other that is earthy. And there are things you need to do to each other. I'm sorry, for each other <laughs> that you don't see and you can't measure. And it makes people crazy because what are the rules? These, these are spiritual matters because they're intangible. Hmm. I have kind of a off the cuff sort of rando uh, question right off the, out of the gate here. What do you believe is a pressing issue right now? What What is something that um, would be important for everybody to know? You know, like we, for our audience, you know, however much it is or anybody that'll see this interview, what is something that Jewish people could use to know that you wish was in the zeitgeist that in the, the people knew right now. What is a pertinent piece of information regarding this and Judaism? I can tell you what it's not. That works. <laughs> it's not politics. It's not the environment. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not Corona. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's something much, much bigger. Let, let's start it this way. Stay spiritual scares a lot of people. Huh? Because the word really? spiritual, you know? Yeah. What in the world? And we get into this weird stuff. <laughs> yeah. Talking about black magic. What, what are we talking about here? What is spiritual? So the, the way we see it is that it's really divided into three realities. The physical, the spiritual, and the godly. So the spiritual and the physical need to be harnessed in the service of God. But spiritual itself is not necessarily godly. Because spiritual can be very evil. Some of the most evil people in history were, were spiritualists. They were psychic, they were whatever. So spiritual doesn't really describe godliness. In fact, if you if you just go by the first words of the of the Torah, in the beginning God created heaven and earth. Heaven means the spiritual. Earth is the earthy. So the spiritual and the earth earthy were both created by God. And they both are tools that can be used for the good and they can be used for the for the bad. Mm. So spiritual really is a part of creation. If we understand it and use it properly, it doesn't take you away from the physical. It doesn't take you to some outer space uh, mindset. And I don't even know. I don't know that that's even spiritual. I think that's just imagination, fanciful. Yeah, yeah, could be. Yeah. So the spiritual is simply the non-tangible side of life. It's life, but it's not the part you can touch or, or measure. But without it, there's no life. So it's not optional. It's the other side of the coin. Mm. Yeah. So, for example, you get married. Well, in the marriage, there are things you need to do for each other that is earthy. And there are things you need to do to each other. I'm sorry for each other <laughs> that you don't see and you can't measure and it makes people crazy because what are the rules what are the spiritual rules what does she mean i don't understand her i don't know what she wants why does she do that why can't he be like my father you know no these these are spiritual matters because they're intangible hmm. You can't put it on a scale and measure it. But without it, there's no marriage. There's no life. Ah. Yeah, that's interesting. The other I like the way you said that about being the other side of the coin. Um and so is that what you specialize in? You know, it sounds like you probably because you are a human being, there's plenty of Thanks for the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> We're all humans here. 
Um, but seems like that's the specialty maybe of a rabbi is actually helping figure out this, the other side of the coin there the tell what's going on there. Yeah. Um, I think bringing together the spiritual and the physical is very, very helpful. It's mm -hmm. essential. It's mm -hmm. essential. Mm -hmm. We're not going to have life if we separate them. All right. right. One thing right. I'm always cu cu uh, curious about with kind of like, you know, people of faith like yourself um and like thinking about kind of the torah the old testament some of the spiritual or supernatural events that took place within that book um i was curious you know like how do you feel uh, uh about that juxtaposed with kind of the current reality we're living in and then one thing i always like to ask everyone uh who comes on the show is like, have you yourself had any supernatural experiences that you can relate to yourself that were like, wow, I feel like God really, you know, that was for just me or I had this supernatural experience of God. Has anything like that ever happened to you? And maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Hmm. Not that I remember and not that I'm conscious of, but it happens all the time. <clears throat> but because it is part of life, we don't necessarily notice it, call it spiritual. Yeah. For example, a very, a very day, practical example. Honor your father and mother. Is that physical or spiritual? Spiritual. And that's both. Why, or, yes. Yeah, both, yeah. Yes. And that's why people say, honor my parents. What in the world does that mean? I say, it means carry their bags for them. Oh, okay, I can do that. Yeah, but it doesn't say carry bags, it says honor. So one of the ways you honor is by carrying the bag. But is that all there is to honoring parents? So you have these teenagers who think their parents are disasters and, and that it's their curse in life to be born to these parents. <laughs> and then one day they wake up and they say, you know, I got a pretty good dad. He's 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 awesome. He put up with me. Mm -hmm. That borders on the miraculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So that is a spiritual awakening. She won't call it religious or divine or godly. But what happened was for most of her life, she ignored the spiritual aspect of her relationship with her parents. And then all of a sudden it dawned on her. There's something very special about my father, about my mother. That is spiritual. So now she honors them by carrying their bags, but with the right spirit. It's not just an act of service. It's done honorifically, if that's a word. Right. So, right. so that is the spiritual side of of daily life. And it reflects the importance of guidance, too, because even if even if the real meaning of it clicks in later, uh, somebody would value that they had guidance to 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 do the right thing, even when they didn't know why they were doing the right thing. It seems like that w would be the importance of that. And speaking of teenagers, I, I watched a little bit of your stuff and I noticed it sounds it just sounded like in some of your videos that you were talking to a younger group of people. I, I don't know all the details, if they're people in training to end up, you know, part of the official religious system or what. But um, I noticed some useful sounding questions coming your way and almost like a, there's this questioning aspect. And I respected the way that you took questions at face value and i wonder just a sidebar thing here if you have to apply patience sometimes with all the questions you must get asked as a rabbi does it ever test your patience um and are you looking for certain questions you know what kind of questions do you wish people asked is it okay for people to come with almost a little bit of hostility sometimes when they're confused and asking questions yeah uh, a little hostility is good keeps things interesting <laughs> But the questions, the questions that I really enjoy immensely are the big ones. All right. Like, tell me about everything. What is everything all about? 
Yeah. I, I, that's a lot better than what should I do? My mother walks into my room without permission. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, grow up. Stephen Hawking's got some theories. <laughs> on those, everything. those questions have become much more common among among young people. Mm. Preteens. Yeah. Weird, right? Like philo they're big philosophers now or something. Yeah. yeah. Parents are terrified. <laughs> what am I gonna tell them if they ask me that question, right? Mm. But but that's such a good positive development. Yeah. Do you think that's due to kind of like the environment kind of evolving from uh maybe uh humanity kind of moving out of a place of such like rough survival like everything's all about okay just getting you know survival now that there's been maybe uh, a little bit of stability given now that uh gives the ability for these some of these higher questions to come about yes yeah, yeah. And, and on the one hand they are higher questions on the other hand they're the most basic the most obvious the most simple question in the world mm. like what am I doing here? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just going to ask you, I was just going to ask you, like, here's a, the most popular question probably people ask is like, from the Jewish perspective, what is, is there a meaning to life, like a prescribed meaning to life? And if so, what, what is it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and in the reverse, if there <laughs> isn't, then let me add it here. No. Yeah. If there is no meaning to life, then, then I can't stand being alive. Yeah, I don't know why exactly, but but that's the way humans are. If I can't have a an, a, a reason to live, then then I can't live. Yeah, yeah, I, that that reflects human psychology to a T, <laughs> for I, sure. I can't stand being useless. Yeah, yeah. So it's unbearable there, suffering. Yes, mm -hmm. that that's definitely spiritual. Mm -hmm. It's intangible. Like, I don't even know why. So, for example, love is not spiritual. L love is, is, is as spiritual as, as appetite. I'm hungry for food. I'm hungry for company and for, and for connection. It's not spiritual. It's a little hard to identify. It's but more like gardening. Art. Art, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you look at a piece of art and you think, you know, they couldn't find the they couldn't find the painter to hang, so they hung the painting. <laughs> <laughs> so love can be very selfish, like any appetite. I mean, hunger is also an intangible. Describe hunger. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not going to describe hunger. Give me something to eat. <laughs> yeah. It's an appetite. It's it's yeah. So why do we why do we seek meaning? And we always have. Always. There's never been a time in human history that we haven't demanded. Yeah. Uh, Is it like looking for a reason you think to kind of justify some of the suffering that we go through? That's you know, that's how it used to be. When the suffering was huge, we suddenly became philosophers. Like why, Job? You know why? Yeah. But when things are good, we don't bother asking. Mm. Today, we're asking it even when it's good. So yeah. it's, it's a it's yes. improvement. Now it's a real question, not not a not a painful you know, uh, call for help. It's a real question. So it works out like this. I don't know why it took us thousands of years to figure this out. You got to make a living, right? You got to plow the fields. You got to put in the seed. You got to harvest. Why? Because the winter is coming. And if we don't have the food, we're going to die. Well, that motivated people. Yeah. Even today, we think, you know, death is the ultimate motivation. You don't want to die. Well, today, people are saying, uh, why not? Yeah. We, yeah. we dare to ask that question. Mm -hmm. Why not? 
I've even uttered myself the phrase when questioned, what's the meaning of life? I've said, well, maybe the meaning of life is death. And maybe the meaning and maybe the meaning of death is life. And that's very sad because it's senseless. <laughs> well, well, <clears throat> hang on. Hang on. I say it in terms of uh, a lot of the suffering that I see grappled with, you know, like there's an old parable of a guy that came before the Buddha and he goes, you know, what is the meaning of life other than for me to take care of my kids? I go, I wake up every day. I go to work. I do this. I go to the, the church or the synagogue or whatever. And I say my my alms what is the meaning and the guy and the monk says uh what more meaning do you want that's like a lot of things to do and so i only mean it in that sense that when people go well what's the mean what's the great there are life is already full of things even if you're a drug addict you got to wake up every day and rummage through a garbage to get your needles or whatever you got to do your life is full of tasks no matter how slothful or whatever you are there's so much already to do that I feel like sometimes, just as a question, I'm not saying it's the answer, but I pose the question sometimes if somebody asks me what's the meaning, well, maybe the meaning is death. Maybe you do this thing knowing you're going to die. And then that, if you knew you were gonna die, and that was that, that changes the flavor of your life. It's just one way of looking at it. Of course, a different way of looking at it would be to go, that is insane. And that, you know, that's reckless, first of all, we might all end up reprobates chasing hedonic pleasures if we looked at it that way. We, so to keep things together here, let's have a greater purpose than that rather than death, you know. But I, in some sense, sometimes I get a little uh, disheartened feeling like morality itself doesn't work. Like the idea of a promise to come causes a lot of suffering. Uh, holding ourselves in a way that's less than... Uh, utterly honest has potential to cause division among people has potential to cause suffering so i wouldn't say that to everybody but to some people if they're at their wits end maybe they've they no longer want to be religious i might suggest well then maybe the purpose is death but that's okay it doesn't mean rush into it but maybe and i anyway i'll let you respond now <laughs> that's the best defense i can have as to why i would say something like that but well and and <clears throat> it is partially true because we are living as if there is a purpose. We're just, we're just not sure what it is. Yeah, yes. Mm. Yeah. Maybe, maybe raising children, having good children, maybe that's the purpose, but is it? <laughs> yeah. so, so if you go to the big picture, if tomorrow the entire world simply stops existing, not a painful ap apocalypse, just gone, over, done. Yeah. Who would care? Yeah, who's there to care? Who's, there to, who's care? there to care? So what would be the tragedy? Yeah. Oh. That's a scary thought. Yeah. That everything I do, including the spiritual, if it didn't exist, wouldn't make any difference. Yeah. So it's like we're chasing our own tails. It's like, you got to live. Why? Because if you don't live, then 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 you won't be alive. <laughs> yeah, it's not making any sense at all. You got to live because 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 you don't want to not live. I don't understand what that means even. <laughs> but that living that living drive is pretty strong. I mean, I I've known people that have been sad for long bouts of time, talked about uh self-harm even and stuff like that but the drive to live is very strong they don't do it you know some people do and i don't mean to trigger anybody but i'm saying i've known people that have suffered i've known my own depths of suffering but the drive to live is pretty strong it's mysterious really at the end of the day well it's so strong actually that even even self-harm is a quest for life yeah mm -hmm. yes it's an idea even. Yeah, it's not you want to stop existing it's you want a better existence. Yeah. Yeah. So the question is why? Yeah. It's like this one woman way back when I just got out of school and all of a sudden people are asking me questions that I <laughs> have no idea why I should know the answer. But uh, this woman comes right up to me, nose to nose, and says, I'm going to kill myself. I got it all planned. I'm, that's it. I'm finished. I'm done. Why? 
because it's all meaningless. All meaningless. And, and naively, I said, everything is meaningless? She says, yes, everything's meaningless. I said, then why do you have to kill yourself? Just sit quietly and you'll die soon. <laughs> yeah. 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 Why, why the dramatics? Would you have to go jump off a bridge? It's all meaningless. So yeah. just sit. Especially somebody that's calmly asking a question. That's not even somebody whose foot's caught in a bear trap. It's like, you can calmly express to me that it's meaningless and you're going to kill yourself. Just wait a sec. Yeah. Let's just wait for a second here. I mean, you feel the breeze? Feel that for a second? You know, anything you can do to ground someone back in reality. I, I think that's a very wise thing that you said. But <laughs> I could lose my license if I was a professional. Uh, the thing is, this 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 painful rejection of life if life is meaningless tells us something about reality yeah it's not a subjective you know individual reaction everyone has that reaction so instead of give me liberty or give me death which is only one guy who got famous for saying it every human being will say Give me meaning or give me death. I cannot hang around if there's no meaning. There's something about the human being. I think there's that a- is the crux of to stay spiritual. You know, in response to earlier when you said that's a s- scary thing, you know, I hear that. I hear what you're saying. And, you know, maybe that's on purpose to, to, to ward off people that are not ready for it or something like that. But we've been asked, what does stay spiritual mean? And we don't always have an answer. But I think it's to address what you said is that primary question of give me meaning or give me death. That's got to be 99.9% of all humans that have ever existed. And for me, I suppose I can only speak for me. I'm sort of interested in the 1% that go, wait a sec, wait a sec here. What if I'm not willing to say, give me meaning or give me death? Because there's no shortage of meanings to grab onto. They're endless, infinite meanings to to grasp onto. What's going on? What's the backdrop for all these meanings? Is it Jehovah? Is it? And so I like to hear everybody's answers, but I hope that made sense to some degree. Well, there's also to address that fearful aspect of it, you know. There's also the kind of the individual take on it, too, because there are some out there who think that uh, meaning is found uh, like it's it's whatever you make of it. It's like, I have to be here. You know, I didn't choose to be here. I'm here. So what will I make of this? What will I do here? Rather than taking on maybe a prescribed meaning. Because there's lots of people that will point and say, like, the meaning of your life is this. Uh, Or they'll train you up to be a way. And they'll say, this is what you were designed to do. This is what you're going to do. And then uh, that may not sit so well with everyone. And there are others who are like, well, no, I'm going to make my own meaning. You know, I'm going to go figure this thing out. What do you what do you think about that? Yeah, well, but again, the question is, why do you have to have meaning? Yes. Yeah, that is the question. Yes, you are here. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. Why are you looking for meaning? What do you complicate everything? (laughs) Yeah, that's a good way. Eat, drink and be merry and tomorrow you'll die. What's the problem? Yeah. Is that actually the answer that you're giving? No, because nobody (laughs) accepts that. Right, Mm -hmm. right. Yes. You would think it's hedonism. So simple. Yeah, well, yeah. yes. Why not? Yeah. See, there's no, it seems like there is no built-in reason to look for meaning. So why why do you bother with it? Stop torturing yourself. <laughs> Have a good meal and, and, and enjoy yourself. What, what, what do you what do you want? <laughs> it yeah. doesn't work though. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't. Nope. And we always thought it's because of the pain. Mm-hmm. But it's not. Today, all of a sudden, successful people, popular people, healthy people just kill themselves. Mm-hmm. Why? And why are children asking, why am I here? Why don't you like your toys? What, what, what is your problem? You're a kid. So listen to this. This is, I think, so universal and so necessary. God created the world. 
whether you believe it or not. God created the world. Whatever, whoever God is, he created the world. Why? It doesn't make sense. Of all beings, God should be the least likely to create a world because he's already perfect. He's already eternal. He's already all-powerful. Why in the world create a world? With suffering. With, yeah, with his suffering. People deny him, complain to him, accuse him of all sorts of things. Why? The simple answer. The very reason that God created the world is because he is eternal, perfect, and alone. He created the world so that he's not alone. That's the only thing that was missing. The only possible motivation is, I am everything, and that's a dead end. Mm -hmm. Now what? <laughs> like, if you were perfect, what would I say to you? <laughs> exactly. If we were the same person. Yeah. 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 What's new? Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are you yeah. planning for the weekend? Nothing. What have you learned? Nothing. Exactly. Yeah. So perfect is also sterile. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when we say, oh, God is perfect. God. Yeah, that's his problem. That's not a compliment. I wonder if that's got something that's tied. It reminds me of verses that talk about like taking joy when you tr face hard times, even, you know, like count it joy when you when you go through difficult stuff. It's like that on the onset. That must sound crazy to a lot of people, but just scriptures. I don't know what text it's from. Yeah. I don't know if it's from the Jewish or Christian or whatever it is, but it. Reminds me of that, that that might help you to, to actually, uh, which oddly enough, paradoxically, would also take away from the purpose if you're supposed to be learning from your suffering. Okay, so here's, here's the thing. There is a purpose, and that's why we're desperate to find it. If there was no purpose, no one would ever look for a purpose. We're not all crazy. And even crazy people don't make up stuff that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. You know, the guy who thinks he's Napoleon is because there was a Napoleon. Right. If there had never been a Napoleon, no insanity would make you think you're Napoleon. He doesn't speak in a language no one's heard before. <laughs> That's right. So the reason we look for a purpose is because there is a purpose. And we exist out of that purpose. So the purpose is an essential component of what we are, the essential component. We are a purpose. That's what we are. So mm. if we don't know the purpose, we don't know ourselves. Mm. Like you would never be homesick if there was never a home. Yeah. yeah. You can't miss something you never had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist. So. Listen to this. God created the world to not be alone. When we feel that same discomfort with being alone, that's spiritual. So for God, it's a need. For us, it's spiritual. So since we're created in God's image, he can't stand being alone, and we inherit that from him. So the, 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 the rejection or the resistance to aloneness is a godly component. It's not human. Human beings would much rather be alone. That's Especially if they're keyed into their more hedonic side. Heck yeah. Either alone or surrounded by a bunch of yes people. Which is alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. Yeah. So when I read it, in, in, the, in the Torah, in the Bible, God said, it is not good to be alone. My first question was, really? <laughs> then why is everyone always demanding to be left alone? Got to get away. Got to get away to some remote <laughs> island. And just just leave, me, leave me alone. Okay, I'm leaving. No, no, don't leave. <laughs> Just clap at me while I receive some kind of an award. <laughs> so what is it? What is 
you know Billy Joel's line in in the in Piano Man. Oh, I'm the best thing that's since sliced bread. I don't remember the whole songs about how amazing he is. There, it, no, no. There's a very, <laughs> there's a very good line there. It says it's, it's it's a bar scene. It's describing a bar. It says they're they're sharing a drink called loneliness. Yeah, but it's better than drinking alone. Yeah, right. that's a good oh. line. Wow. Yeah. Because loneliness is not the real problem. You can share loneliness. Yeah. You know, two lonely people sit and talk. Yeah. Yeah. But then you go home and you realize, I'm not lonely. I'm alone. You can't even share that. And that is literally physically unhealthy. Yeah. It, 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 it destroys your immune system. Yeah. So why do we have that? Leave me alone, but I can't stand being alone. These are the two sides. The human side of us wants to be alone. Uncomplicated. I do what I want. I come when I want. I go when I want. No, have to, I don't have to answer to anyone. So if I'm self-sufficient, oh, please leave me alone. Do you mind if I interject one thing? Because I just think it would might be helpful even to what you're saying in terms of the being alone thing. Because I've found some, uh, I don't know if you'd call it ascetic practice or some value in purposeful alone, being aloneness. Time to meditate, ruminate, whatever. Meditate on scriptures, self-hypnosis, whatever. I found some value. And you know, not that I deny that there could be physical... Uh, consequences of being alone that it might actually affect your immune system we're social creatures but i wouldn't necessarily balk at somebody who is deep in spiritual practice that for the purposes of connecting with god uh chose to be alone for like a prolonged time i mean they usually come back to the world with a message or something like that or oftentimes they have but i'm not sure that uh i just i don't know i guess i'm a little nitpicky i just wanted to address the idea of being alone on purpose for spiritual practices. That, 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 that's a thing too. But hopefully, hopefully, that kind of meditative uh, uh, isolation is the pursuit of a relationship with God. Yes, that's what not, I mean by that. Not alone. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. If it's alone for the purpose of a hedonism, like I'm going to get alone and I'm going to drink myself silly for weeks, 100%. The limits of that will become obvious quickly. But people, I think, in the pursuit of being alone can sometimes fast. That It looks on the outside like a physical deterioration, but they are pursuing godly endeavors. And that it's a different thing, in my opinion. So if God is real to you and you're pursuing a relationship with him, then of course you're not alone. Yeah. But if you just want a spiritual experience and there's no one on the other end to receive you, Yes. Then that spirituality is is spiritual gluttony. And you could learn from that, though. Even if you went and did it, you might come back and be either a charlatan telling people you came back and saw God. Only you will know the truth of it. Right. But sometimes you may glean even the insight like, well, even that didn't do it. I suppose I'll go back to church or whatever the result may be. It's still a learning opportunity, I would, I would just suggest. I think everything is. Yeah. You either learn what to do or what not to do. That's correct. Yeah. So, Sorry. Anyway. So here's the two sides of our of our personality. As humans, we don't mind being alone at all. But because we're created in God's image, there is something about us that reflects the same choice or the same preferences as God Himself. God Himself created us because being alone is not good. Not it's hard. On the contrary, it's much easier to be alone. Yeah. What's the goodness of it? So a guy is completely self-sufficient. He does it all by himself. He needs no one's help for anything. Is he good? <laughs> He's capable. What's good about it? He's efficient in being alone. <laughs> yeah, which is very talented. But where's the goodness? Right. So God created the world in order to become united with someone other than himself. 
That's, that is it. That's the entire story of existence. Now, the reason God gives us commandments, which, which is a terrible word, by the way, commandment. I don't know who translated from the Hebrew into commandment, because the Ten Commandments in Hebrew are called the Ten Statements or the Ten Wordings. It had nothing to do with commandment. All right, so when God gives us a commandment, like, for example, don't murder, something simple like that, of course he's telling us what to, not to do. But more than that, he's telling us something about himself. I am pro-life, so be pro-life with me. I'm not talking about abortion. I'm talking about in general. Yeah. Like, I am a creator, not a destroyer, so don't destroy. In other words, stay in step with me. Yeah. Now, how do I stay in step with you? I don't have no idea where you're going. So he tells us. That's the entire Bible. God is telling us where he goes, where he doesn't go, what he likes, what he doesn't like, so that we can stay in step with him. Like the Sabbath, for example. Six days I created the world, and on the seventh day I rested. And therefore what? Rest with me on the seventh day. Because that's what I'm doing. Join me. During the six days, I'm creating. Join me. Create with me. On the seventh day, I rest. Rest with me. Stay by my side. What is the, per po the point and the purpose of all of that? It sounds natural. It sounds like a natural <laughs> a nat process. A natural good relationship. Yeah, yeah that too. Yeah. I want, I need you, because otherwise I'm alone. But how do I have you? If you're off doing your thing and I'm right. off doing my thing, mm, right. I need you, but I don't have you. Yeah. Because huh. you're worshiping some other God. Do you, I, I have a quick question. Do you see these principles reflected? Because we we have the the thing of talking to people such as yourself, which is awesome, by the way. This is awesome. But every now and then it, some of the things you say remind me of other spiritual people's practices that allude to the same thing. Like that's why we stop and we pray several times a day, or that's why we interrupt the process of what we're doing in our day-to-day -day life to reconnect with God. Right. Do you recognize that at all as a yeah, but similar here's, thing? Here's, here's the big distinction. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic, and you're looking for more information, or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it. These ideas, these messages, this approach to life, this approach to Torah, to meaning, and to morals is vital for the world today. And we need to get this message out to the entire world. It is universal, it's essential, it's indispensable. To support this effort, if you want to be a partner in this crime, check out the link and make a donation. It really helps a lot. And thank you in advance.